Cybercrime runs the gamut of most of the bad things that humans do to each other. Uh, it touches now in the cyber realm. Identically, you can think every, everything from slavery, human trafficking, sexual exploitation, to good old-fashioned fraud, embezzlement, moving money around, money laundering. You can even hire a hitman, particularly if you don't like your current wife, ex-wife, brother-in-law, just go down the whole list. So I, uh, when I'm asked by some of my relatives, well, geez, Don, what do you do during the day? I say, well, just about everything that humans have done to each other for the last four or 5,000 years they're now doing in cyberspace. So I have job security <laughs> forever. <laughs> that will probably never change. Um, the domestic approach of the FBI is regarding cybercrime immediately and almost instantly turns into a global effort. There almost are no major investigations or major problems that we face that do not become globally instantly. Why is that? Well, because of the nature of the internet, because of the nature of where records are stored, how financial transactions are performed. The bad guys know better than all of us where they can hide. Good example of that. Uh, a French-speaking West African nation, the bank that all these money transfers we found were going to, this was essentially people who were defrauding your mother-in-law, cleaning out her bank account, defrauding that small business. After the fourth or fifth hop through various nations all over the world, landed in a windowless concrete building that had the best air conditioning, by the way, in the entire country. <laughs> that was the bank, because it's a bunch of servers. It's a bunch of electronic boxes sitting there moving this money around. The only reason we found the guy who owned the bank was because his girlfriend took offense that he was now spending his evenings elsewhere. And she said, go look for the guy riding in or driving the black Rolls Royce. Well, there's only one Rolls Royce in the entire country, and that's his. That's how we found him. That literally was 48 hours after multiple bank accounts in the United States had been cleaned out. We followed the money trail. Myself was already on the ground with some of my colleagues in this nation. And we could literally watch, and he is withdrawing money and moving it to other European nations, as an example, within about 12 hours. So U.S. victims, U.S. banks being defrauded, ends up in a West African country. He's got a plane ticket. The day we arrested him, he was getting ready to fly to Kiev. Well, why is that? Because there's no extradition treaty to back to the United States, or by the way, most other European nations. So the global approach to cybercrime really has now become our domestic approach to cybercrime, and that is we have to work extraordinarily carefully in certain areas to say, I realize every other nation around the world has different privacy laws, they have different legal forms, but we work extraordinarily closely with our law enforcement partners all over the world. We work very, very closely with our public and private partners here in the United States. Uh, Scott's group, as an example, the IT ISACs. Why, why is that relevant to cybercrime? Because these folks are going to see that wave of phishing attacks. They're going to see that new piece of malware. They're going to see that new farming scheme out there quicker than we, the FBI, are. So we talk to them, not every day, every hour, <laughs> maybe every five minutes, depending on what's, what's going on. Many of you probably saw the conficker worm, that big thing hit the press. Well, if I were to tell you there are 50 of those sorts of things every single hour of every day, they don't all get that big, but they're all out there. So our approach, our global approach, our national approach to cybercrime is to work with our public and private alliance partners, to work with our international law enforcement colleagues, and we have gotten extraordinarily involved in the last several years with internet governance efforts. Why is that? Because our Dutch police colleagues have the exact same problem with retention of records, determining where the money went, what country is the actual physical actor in that we have. My colleagues in Cameroon, my colleagues in South Africa have exactly the same issues and problems because it's South African citizens that are being victimized and, and defrauded. So they 
and we have coalesced and teamed together because we, as law enforcement and as government users, are members of the global community. We use the internet. We all as citizens have our own bank accounts and mother-in-laws who have bank accounts. That the global law enforcement community has really coalesced very rapidly around this and said, hey, we're all having similar problems and we have to work together.